Porcupines do not shoot their quills. There's no, no. Pew! quills no. shooting out into your eyes and your face. Like, that doesn't happen. But it nope. does make that sound. It absolutely makes that sound. Fire! What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome back to Base Camp. You guys want to see something super cool? Check this out. Coyote Pack fan art! Woo! Yeah! These are awesome. You guys listened. You started sending in art. Big thank you to Emily, a brave member of the Coyote Pack, for sending in these pictures that really look a lot like us. Mario, yeah. what do you think? That's me. Absolutely. That definitely looks like me and you. Pretty good. Man, the hat's a spot on match right there. I know, there. right? Super cool. Now, weren't you supposed to hang these today? I thought we had chores and yeah. Mario cleaned the, the room. I got the cameras ready. You were supposed to hang these. I thought it'd be cool to just hold them up or maybe we could tape them to our faces for the entire episode and, you know, um, kind of be like characters. Yeah. Maybe not, not so much. No. no. Okay, well, let's put these down. We will hang them up on the wall, Emily. Thank you for sending them. Mm -hmm. But right now, let's dive into an episode. As okay. you know, Base Camp is the series where we dissect old videos on the Brave Wilderness channel. So if you guys are ready, I got a good one lined up for today. Okay, okay. where are we going to? We're gonna start where the pain started. Ooh. People always wanna know, Coyote, where did all this pain and agony begin? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? I think in Montana, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Mario, you remember this spiky little creature, right? I do, yep. Yeah. We're gonna go back and watch the video where I was quilled by the North American porcupine. I'm Coyote Peterson. Uh -oh. Yes, you are. That is the North American yes, it is. <laughs> and he's got a leaf. <laughs> Looks very content. It's a very meaningful commentary you're contributing yes, right now. Yes, I'm very good at analyzing like what's right there on the screen. This is our opening animation. You see those? Those are animal tracks, kids. And that's a boot track. Man, I can really see why people watch this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's me pumping gas. But wait, well, we don't let you drive. That's a really yeah. fast shot. We don't let you drive or really pump gas. That no, was... that was actually being done for a sponsor, yeah. wasn't it? I didn't even know you could tell that I was pumping gas in that shot. That's, That's a cool, cool shot, though. You got that, I think. Yeah. Oh, there's the selfie stick. Making a little Montana appearance. Is that a new selfie stick or is that? It is. Like, it what, is. what is your process with the selfie stick? Well, it's all about finding a new unique stick in every location okay. to put the GoPro on. They're pretty rare, these sticks. When you're yeah. in the forest, there's not very many of them. There are many sticks in the forest, but only that one is unique to being a selfie stick. Okay, and then do we keep it? Do you take it with you back or you just leave you know, it back in I the wild? donate it to the environment so that it can decompose and become one with the world. I thought you okay. always told me you put it back with its family so it wouldn't be sad. There's a little bit of that too, but now I'm starting to bring them home with me and we're gonna be selling them on the Brave Wilderness Store. BraveWildernessStore.com, guys. Just go ahead there and you will see a great variety of sticks. woodland sticks. Remember, I told you, like, we're not doing like that. false advertising, you can't Man, do that. I, I, every, I forget, bad memory. What can I say? Well, maybe at some point we'll make an artificial selfie stick, but now let's get back into this porcupine. Look at a little eye. You can see the determination in his eyes to quill me. That's what I saw. I don't think it had that in mind that day. Oh, you can see. There's a, there's a lot of disdain for Coyote with that cute little beady eye. You know, when you look at it, uh, the porcupine, it doesn't really look that spiky, you know? It kind of looks fluffy, like you'd want to cuddle it. Maybe that's the mistake that a lot of people make when they get quilled by porcupines, is that they cuddle them. Maybe. Is because it was actually raised in captivity. Now are porcupines fast? Like if, if you, is there like a chance you could actually get quilled? I know dogs get quilled. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. No, porcupines are not fast, correct? No, but they do actually have a defensive move. So if they get cornered mm -hmm. by a predator, they actually could either like rear up right. and they kind of will put their bum in front of them mm -hmm. or behind them to face the predator. And then they, they might actually do little charges. Okay, like, so uh, ah, get away from me. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Like intimidation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And just so it's clear, because this is a huge misnomer that we were trying to disprove in this episode, porcupines do not shoot their quills. There's no, no. quills shooting out into your eyes and your face. Like, that doesn't happen. But it no. does make that sound. It absolutely makes that sound when you, you know, activate you the guard hairs. Pew! Yeah, and it's got like lightning bolts and stuff like that. But no, you have to activate the guard hairs on the porcupine yep. for it to yeah. 
Yeah, it's actually just a uh, very responsive move from the porcupine. It just right. happens. Yeah, right. and that's you call a rump, right? The rump or yeah. booty or bum. whichever the bum, bum. You know, the, the porcupine's the behind. Butt. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not actually like his butt where his poops come out. It's like the back of it. You know, like the back the, of his tail. The back end. Which, which. Yeah. <laughs> For real. All right, here we go. Choked only by its aquatic cousins, the beaver. Now, Ooh, this is kind of cool. Look at this. Hold on, wait for the shot coming up here. Yeah, the claws. Talking about the claws, right? Yeah, yeah. Look at that. What? Mario. That's pretty cool. This thing looks like it's related to the badger, but is it? No, it's not. As you mentioned, it is a type of rodent. And uh, in North America, we have several rodent species mm -hmm. with the porcupines being the second largest, mm -hmm. the first being the beaver. Yeah. But what about the world's largest rodent? The R-O-U-S. The what? Rodent of unusual size. What's from, that? From Princess Bride. Haven't you guys seen that no. movie? What? I, th I think it's the Cabibara. Cabibara, yeah, correct. Is it Cabibara or Cabibara? Either one. Potato, yeah. potato, sure. tomato, tomato. Can be either one. But what about right. the giant rat in The Princess Bride? That I, thing is huge. I don't know what movie you're talking about. You've never seen The Princess Bride. Have you? No, I mean... Master Splinter and the Ninja Turtles. Now that I know. Right? Well, there Master we Splinter, he is a wise rodent. But if you guys haven't seen The Princess Bride, definitely check out that movie. It has a giant rat in it. That was my favorite part. Really? That's actually pretty scary. You're going you're gonna to want to check that one out. Trust okay. Me. Climb up trees Those claws are impressive. Tree in time. What they do is exactly this. Show the rump side. Rump side, that's a technical term, right? Scientific? Sure. Yeah. Posterior rump right. side. Today my goal is to intentionally get quilled by a porcupine. Yes, you heard me right. I'm going to get quilled by a porcupine. So let's talk about why. Yeah, why not? Why get quilled by a porcupine? Well, at the time of making this video, I think it was like our third production trip, mm -hmm. how-to videos were like the most popular videos at the time. And we thought, well, how can we kind of join the how-to club? What can you do how-to with Yeah, I want to be part animals. of the club. Yeah, and you know, being in Montana, we were seeing pictures of people's dogs that were getting quilled and we're like, well, that would be really interesting to show people how to remove a quilt. Now, clearly we're not going to have a dog get quilled for the video, but no. Mario was like, maybe if we go to the store and get a turkey leg, and get it quilled. No, there no. was none of that. <laughs> we didn't think of that idea until the alligator you, snapping You turtle. offered your hand. I did, because, you know, I'm not a dog, I'm a coyote. You're coyote and I got yeah. a paw, so let's put a human hand into the experiment and see what happens. So, right? so was the whole intention of the video was for education. Yeah. What do you do if you're quilled or your pet is quilled and how do you remove it? And mm -hmm. how do you remove it properly because most people don't know the proper way to do it. And most Bingo. people don't get intentionally quilled. I'm going to show you the no, right way to remove these painful barbed quills from either yourself or in most cases from the snout of your curious pet. Now, I mean, now most people who are quilled by porcupines are probably this people example, who handle them frequently. Yeah, who are these people? I was going to say, you can't just go the out there in the hand. wilderness and get quilled by porcupines. Yeah, you got to really no work to get quilled. Quill. Yeah, now, a dog or a pet, that makes sense, but a person... Because yeah. dogs are curious, they're like, let me sniff this thing's butt, because it's what dogs do, and you get close, and then whack, you know, a nose full of quills. In the face, that would be pretty bad. Yeah, that would, that would of course, getting quilled in the face would be bad. Did I even need to make that statement? Potentially dangerous, think of all the things. I'll go right in your eyeball. Uh, I love how I get myself into these things. At first, he didn't one, want to quill me, and two, then, ooh, ooh, there it is. Yep. Hold on, can you? Can Happened you, so fast. Can we do you that one more time? See it with the sound effect. And we, we should have had put a my sound effect. effect in. Yeah, ready? Yeah, you ready? For yeah, this? Okay. yeah. Uh, I love how I get myself into these things. One, two. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. Boom! A handful of quills. That's what this video was missing all along. Yeah, just that. I mean, we may have gotten millions more views if I had put in my sound effect. What can I say? You see how deep those are into my e. yeah, Hold on. My right now. Yeah, right there. Ah, uh, that was um, a bad day for Coyote right there, guys. Those ones went in a lot deeper than the rest of them. Yeah. So, so let me ask you before we get into the the ones that really went far in. What was the initial reaction like? You get quilled. First thought. Why? <laughs> well, come on. You should have been thinking about that before you got. I quilled, know. But was it like way worse than you uh, thought? Uh, no. Only those two quills. The one quill that's really bad. You'll notice almost all the black side of the quill is in your hand. Yeah, that was a deep e. one. In fact, it was so far into my finger, it hit a nerve and put my hand into a state of paralysis for the remainder of the scene until I got the quill out. Which, as you'll see here, right now, took a while. Yes. I think they touch bone. 
I love production. It touched bone. You hear that? Does mm -hmm. it really touch bone? I, I don't know. I might have just been making it up in the moment, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Thanks. Gosh, there were so many more quills than I ever thought would have come out of the porcupine. I thought you were going to get like five quills. I mean, to be honest with you, it could have been a lot worse too. I really? mean, that was that was a warning swipe from the porcupine. He was just yeah. agitated because he was trying to eat leaves and he's like, stop bugging me. And then he finally quilled me, but... Um, yeah, it was it was it was pretty bad. Now let's let's pause it here real quick before we actually get into me removing the quills because we had a lot of people write in on the comment section from the original video, right? People saying, "No, no, no, this is not the right way to remove quills." Yes, guys, it is. We talked with experts, specifically people that work with porcupines, on how to remove quills. So I kind of feel like the advice that they gave us is the right advice. Now, if you get quilled or your dog gets quilled and those quills are in deep and you clip off the tip of the quill and it's so deep you can't pull it out, that would be the wrong thing to do. But if you notice, I clip only the top of the quill. Now, when you do this, it releases the pressure that's built up in there. Then you can grab it, twist it, and gently pull it out. Yeah. And, and it is true because, you know, some of the quills that were, had fallen out on the side, we had actually tested this before removing them. Mm -hmm. We took one and like tried to break it and you could feel how much pressure was in. And then mm -hmm. we clipped it and it became very pliable right. and easy. There, there, there's pressure, there's air inside of them. So when they insert into your hand or your dog's snout or whatever, they expand as soon as they release the body of the porcupine. Sure. So yeah. Now, of course, you might want to also get medical attention, right? right? So this is kind of like a last resort if you're out in the field by yourself mm -hmm. and need to get it out quickly. This is for like emergencies only. Like if, if your dog takes a face of quills, if you get quilled really bad, always go to a vet, always go to a doctor. Yes. At, at all costs, it, and this is only in the worst case scenario. Right? We couldn't take Coyote to a vet at the time. No, right? they, they I, I didn't him. have my rabies shots yeah. yet, or my collar. Yeah, you lost yeah. your dog, you would have ended up in the pound. I would have, that would have been bad. We would have not been able to make any more videos, <laughs> right? It's not gonna work. These have microscopic barbs on the end, and one of the cool techniques of the porcupine quill is that once it's in there, it works deeper and deeper and deeper. So and that's honestly what happens. But people don't realize that being quilled by a porcupine can actually kill an animal. So a mountain lion or a wolf or a coyote that's the animal or something like a grizzly bear. If it's quilled by a porcupine, even something as big as a grizzly bear, if it gets quilled in the snout, those quills will keep digging in, an infection could set in, the bear could lose its eye, and eventually that animal dies. Correct. Yep. Yeah, I've also heard that the fragments can actually work their way to the heart mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah start simple, right? It's like taking off a Band-Aid. Yeah, you could, say, you could tell some of those are barely, yeah. barely in there. Well, and again, this was not a porcupine that was defending itself against being eaten. This was a porcupine that was giving me a warning swipe, saying, try and eat my leaves, move on, buddy. my hand, these animals wouldn't be able to then go out and continue hunting. And I can see why eventually this could cause a large predator like that to die. Woo, my hand hurts. Okay. Yeah, it did sort of create this tingling sensation that my hand got pretty swollen afterwards. Almost like, you know, we did the choya cactus. Mm -hmm. We had done that where I put my hand into the choya cactus. Um, it was a, a similar sensation, just all those little puncture marks. Sure. Uh, it's like the wrong form of acupuncture. All right, here, here's something. Ugh. Oh, man. Good sound effect there. Ooh, first blood. Jeez. Oh, that hurt. Oh, you can see the blood pouring out now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly a leech bite, but yeah, yeah. it's pouring out of there as one tiny little drop. It's a real gusher. Yes. Oh yeah, little did you Better know. get the trauma kit. <laughs> you good? It's my Sog Multi Tool. Always comes in handy. Hmm. Oh. That one was the worst right there. Yeah, that makes me uncomfortable still. Yikes. I know a lot of people watched this and wrote in the comments section that they were like cringing. You can almost hear the quill pull out of my skin. Yeah. It's like a oh, Velcro. Wow. Like, now, did you keep those as a souvenir? I, I did actually put them in my backpack and I ended, ended up losing them. I don't know what happened to them. They were contaminated anyways. <laughs> That's true. Get quilled by a porcupine. Uh, obviously that's good advice. Do good not choice. get quilled by a porcupine. I wonder what would have happened if I was like, hey kids, go out there and cuddle a porcupine. You guys probably would have done it. Don't go cuddle a porcupine, okay? Bad idea. Oh, uh, he's like, yep, gotcha. So this video almost wasn't released. It really wasn't. I mean, once I started editing it together, like the, the light was bad, the shots were decent. You really couldn't see how well I was quilled in that moment. Obviously all the quills were in my hand, but 
Once it was all put together, we said, well, we might as well still put it out there. And lo and behold, it became one of the most viewed videos. Still to this day is one of the most viewed. Yeah, it was, it was I think, our first viral video mm -hmm. on the channel. And really the first video where we sort of experimented with the concepts that were outside of the general, like, you know, go search for wildlife and present them to the camera. So we go back and we watch these videos, right? Yeah. Do you ever think to yourself, man, I'd like to go back and do that again? No. There is no <laughs> point in time that crosses my mind where it's like, maybe I should get quilled by a bigger North American porcupine. Or South African porcupine. Not gonna happen. The South African porcupines have quills like this. What do you guys yeah. think? No, we don't <laughs> care what you guys think. I am not gonna get quills by anything else. I'm done with the quills. That's a one and a done right there. All right. Right? Smart. You right. learn. And what I learned is that you should always admire porcupines from a safe distance. So I don't care who you are, if you're out there wandering around in nature, or you've got your dog with you, or your little brother with you, don't get close to porcupine. Simply admire it from a safe distance. Life advice from Coyote Peterson. There you have it. All right, well. I am Coyote Peterson. And I'm Mark Vins. And I'm Mario Dakoa. Be brave. Stay, stay wild. wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. Yeah, I guess we should hang these up on the wall now. Hey Coyote Pack, I have some exciting news. I am proud to announce that the crew and I are headed back on tour with Brave Wilderness Live. Our next shows take place in the Midwest. Tickets can be purchased at the Brave Wilderness website, and these shows are certain to sell out. So make sure that you reserve your seats today. And don't forget, subscribe, so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure. I'm happy to be seeing